Quick summary first. Alcohol does temporarily affect your ketone production in the short term, but can it affect you getting rightfully fat adapted? Does alcohol consumption slow down how your body learns to use fat for fuel? Here's what happens in the short term. Your liver produces ketones, but metabolically, it's a pretty heavy load for the liver to take. It has to go to work. It has to take fatty acids. It has to uh, break them down into acetyl coenzyme A, and it has to, it, it's a complicated process for your body to make ketones in the liver. But what happens is when you consume alcohol in the short term, that alcohol is so dare I say toxic, or at least the acetaldehyde is, the component of it that we digest, that acetaldehyde is so toxic that it has to get prioritized by the liver. So the liver says, well, let me deal with this first and I'll produce ketones later. So sure, in the short term, a couple swigs of alcohol might slow down your ketone formation, but is it largely slowing down your results over the long term? Let's talk about it. Do make sure you hit the red subscribe button and then also hit the bell icon. And then after this video, I want you to check out Thrive Market. If you're doing a ketogenic diet, Thrive Market is awesome. And it's where I pretty much get all my pantry staples. So they get delivered right to your doorstep. You don't have to go to the grocery store. It is very reasonably priced compared to most grocery stores. And it's just super convenient. So I want you to check them out if you are doing keto or you're thinking about doing keto because you can sort by the keto diet and find the perfect things for your own personal protocol. So special link down below for people that view my channel. So fat adaptation is when your body is so good at leveraging ketones that your body learns how to run on fats for fuel efficiently. It's kind of the holy grail. It's what we want out of a ketogenic diet. We want it to train our body to become fat adapted. Well, a lot of this process of fat adaptation comes down to something that is called PPAR alpha, which is actually very, very complex, but it's easy when we look at it in the sense of it's kind of a master switch for fat adaptation. The more PPAR alpha expression, it's called, that we have, the more fat adapted that we are. You see, PPAR alpha turns on all these secondary mechanisms that allow us to reap the benefits of fat adaptation, where our body just has the, let's call it metabolic machinery to just incinerate fats on a whim. You take someone that is not fat adapted versus someone that is, that person that is not fat adapted, you could give them a bunch of fats and their body's gonna be like, uh, where does this go? This piece goes here. It's not gonna really know what to do, but you take someone that has a high expression of PPAR alpha and someone that is fat adapted, you give, you give them fats and their body says, ah, this fat goes here, boom, boom, boom. It can connect the dots very easily and help you create energy like that, which is exactly what we want. Well, it turns out that alcohol consumption slows down beta oxidation, slows down fatty acid oxidation. Now, this is so critical for the activation of PPAR. Why? Because PPAR alpha only gets activated and upregulated if we are oxidizing fat. The more fat that we are using for energy, the more fat that we are converting into ketones, the more PPAR alpha goes up. So if we decrease fatty acid oxidation, we don't get as much PPAR alpha, which means we're not getting as much of the signaling process. Okay, now there's another study that really dives into this a little bit deeper. There's a study that was published in the journal Alcohol that found that ethanol slowed down and sometimes even halted the binding of PPAR alpha to the DNA in hepatocytes. Okay, so that that means in simple English terms is that hepatocytes are liver cells. And these liver cells are really good at converting fat into energy and helping this overall process. So if we stop the binding of PPAR alpha to these cells, to the DNA there, we're literally not programming the liver brain to be able to process fat better. So we're slowing that process down. So the short answer is it absolutely affects your ability to get fat adapted, even over the longer term. But then some people ask the question, well, 
it's a good healthy lifestyle and it relaxes me. It allows me to you know, get more out of my life because it calms me down. And that is a very viable argument, right? Because stress is a huge factor to limiting the effects of the ketogenic diet. But one thing that I have to remind you of is having a little bit of stress in your life is not always a bad thing with the ketogenic diet because the ketogenic diet has the ability to sort of negate the effects of that kind of at a cellular level. So I'm not trying to tell you not to drink alcohol. I think you just need to factor in what your overall consumption looks like over the course of the time that you're getting fat adapted. Now, the question still is out there is, can it reverse some of the effects of fat adaptation? So if you are already a fat adapted individual, does having alcohol reverse that? In a way it could, but I think the most important thing is during the first few months of keto while you're getting adapted, it's probably important to keep the alcohol to an absolute minimum so you can at least develop, again, we're gonna call it the mitochondrial and sort of the, the cellular machinery to process fats properly. So if you wanna get the most out of keto and get yourself to that fat adapted stage, you are much better off abstaining through that first three, four month period. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.